Brothers and sisters, how are you? Um, this is a short video. I just wanted to add something in. I'm going to probably add a couple of things into the, the little series or the whatever the groupings of videos, um, playlists or whatever it's called on YouTube um, about Rapture 2023. And we saw in the series I did, four video series. If you, I know they're long. They're like an hour each. Check it out. Don't miss the third one. People keep skipping that. That's the one that's got all the meat. Maybe not the best done by me. But that's got kind of the best meat in it, or some of the prophecies that are pretty cool. Um, and they all point to 2030. Um, if there was one or two, eh, but there's a lot. I didn't even cover them all. There were too many. Um, check that out. But And this video is going to be unlike most of the other ones that I'm going to do. I do. To me, the word trumps the world every time. What's in the word is more important than what we see in the world. We can be easily confused by what's in the world. But I'm going to talk about what's in the world just for a little bit. A lot of stuff pointing to 2030 in the world. You have Agenda 2030. Out of Agenda 2030, there are so many different, um, different like visions, goals, um, um, different things. I mean, just here's a, just a few. Um, there's a World Bank Group 2030. Um, the World Data Forum has a Vision 2030. You have COP28 um, that is talking about 2030. There's actually NATO 2030, the Great Reset. I don't know if they actually talk about 2030, but the Great Reset is a funky one. All your climate agenda. Um, healthy people 2030. The WHO, the World Health Organization, has an immunization targets for 2030. They have actually 17 goals with 169 targets that are all to be fulfilled by 2030. Um, and even the, the, the wildest one under our current administration, the U.S. military is set to be all electric by 2030. Yeah, let's see those electric jets. Um, 2030. Hmm. That's the beginning. Uh, that's Armageddon. That's the beginning. That's possibly the beginning of the millennial king, the millennial kingdom. What does Satan want? What does Satan want more than anything else? You know, when this is all plays out, he comes in on the earth, middle of tribulation, indwells the, the false prophet. He's got three and a half years. He knows his time is short. What is his goal? To destroy as many people as possible? Let's take it another step further. And we're going to let's read a passage from Psalm 2. And uh, granted, there is not a passage that says, This is the goal of Satan when his time is short. You don't have that. But let's go to Psalm 2. And I'm going to look at something where I'm, I'm going to say, This is what Dave says his goal is. Starting in verse 1. This is about Armageddon. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? That's something that's not to come to fruition. The kings of the earth set themselves together and the rulers take counsel together. It's a unified attack. Think about this. At this point, the Antichrist, indwelled by, the, by Satan, will have control over most of the armies of the world. He'll be leading this or at least making sure that it happens. They take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds to pieces and let us cast away their cords from us. What is the cords and the bonds and the cords? We don't want Messiah to reign over us. We don't want to be subject to him. So they're all gathered in Armageddon, the Valley of Jezreel, the Valley of Decision, um, also known as the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Yeah, the Valley of Decision, Valley of Jehoshaphat. They're gathered there to try to defeat Satan and his army, excuse me, Yeshua and his army when he comes back because they don't want him to reign over them. That's his goal. So he's preparing for this in 2030. That's why everything is 2030. It points to this. Could I be wrong? Yeah, this is my opinion. I'm going out on a limb. I'm, this is not prophecy straight or eschatology straight from um, scripture. This is what I see. How does God respond to this? 
Verse 4, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. That's a ridiculing mock, but it's like more like, oh my goodness, can you see what they're doing? Oh, I can't believe it. It's not going to do anything, I tell you. I don't know if the Lord has a Jewish accent. And actually, I've been told I do a terrible Jewish accent, more like a um, Brooklyn Jewish accent. I don't know. Anyhow, then he shall speak to him in his wrath and distress them in his deep pleasure. I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but let's go to Zechariah 12. What does it mean that he's going to speak to them in his wrath? Yes, he has a, a double-bladed sword coming out of his mouth. The word, Torah, word of God is that sword, right? So he's going to speak to them. Go to Zechariah 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plagues with which the people will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in the sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in the mouth. I'm not going to read the rest. I want to wrap this up. This is supposed to be really short. Um, you ever seen Raiders of the Lost Ark when they open up the co uh, Ark of the Covenant and people just melt? This is where Steven Spielberg got that. This is what's going to happen in Armageddon. I'm more worried about how do I how do I ride a flying horse than I am having to go to Armageddon and battle. You know, we're not going to battle. We're witnesses there. Anyhow, if you haven't subscribed, do so. More videos coming. Um, may God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.